Hi there. I would guess most genealogists dip in and out of the likes of ancestry, my heritage and find my past, if only looking for hints or looking for documents. Some people keep a tree up there for cousin bait and fishing. Other people keep their full tree on ancestry and sites like that. I mentioned in the My Heritage video that I would detail the process of getting all of your research, including images, down from Ancestry and into Family Historian, and that's exactly what this video is. I also mentioned in my previous video the book release of Simple Citations by Geoffrey Lamarca, and here's my copy. It has arrived. The book is roughly A4 in size and runs to 137 pages. The graphics for both Family Historian and Roots Magic template examples are well rendered in full colour, unlike the Roots Magic book publishing where they had Amazon print a colour manuscript in grayscale with disastrous results. There's a handy flow chart to steer you towards the correct template choice, and even though the author has now left Roots Magic behind in preference of Family Historian 7, he has included a Roots Magic 9 appendix for those still persevering with the programme. There are various examples of the concept on the Simple Citations website and links for ordering. For those of us on the east side of the Atlantic and beyond, there's also a very welcome PDF version available for download, and of course at a reduced price. I like a physical book copy, but I must admit I prefer PDF so I can read it on my tablet. And I've been assured that the PDF version is fully printable so you can print it and get a spiral bound down the copy shop if you prefer. I asked Dr. Lamarca for his opinion of Roots Magic and Family Historian 7 in terms of sourcing, whether either program had lessons to learn, whether either program could be improved. He gave me quite a detailed summary, and you'll find that in the shared Dropbox folder, and as always, you'll find the link in the video description. So let's get into the presentation. Firstly, go to rootsmagic.com, scroll down just a little, and you'll see the options for Roots Magic 9 download. Click on the Try It Free button. Entering your details are optional. You don't need to enter anything here. I'm just going to uncheck this box and click the Download button. Select 32 or 64 bit depending on your needs. If you're not sure, select the 32 bit option. The download begins. Once the download is complete, run the file by clicking on it. Select Yes to run the installer. Check the box to accept the license agreement and click Next. Click Next again and select Install. With the box clicked to launch Roots Magic, just click the Finish. Select the Roots Magic Essentials version and you're done. When the program opens, you'll be presented with a screen like this. If not, click the second button down on the left bar. Select Create New Roots Magic File, followed by the Download from an Online Tree and then Ancestry. Select the folder for your downloaded database and give it a name. Just click OK on the File Options dialog. The next stage may differ for you as I received a recent Roots Magic notification that Ancestry logon was changing. However, presently Roots Magic kicks you out to your browser to log on to Ancestry. Once completed, you can return to Roots Magic and you'll see a list of any trees you have online with Ancestry. Click on the Ancestry tree you want to download, followed by the Download Ancestry Tree button. Roots Magic will work through downloading your Ancestry tree including any personal or source media attached to that tree. This may take some time depending on network demand and also on the size of your ancestry tree, so just be patient. Two quick things to know about Roots Magic. Firstly, it does not sync with Ancestry, despite many users saying it does, and using the term synchronization wrongly. Family Tree Maker 2019 does sync with Ancestry. That means you click on a button and both online and desktop are brought into alignment. You may also have seen in my last video how Family Tree Builder from MyHeritage also synchronizes online and desktop with the click of a single button. Roots Magic does not sync. It has a facility to exchange data, and that is massively different from what I just demonstrated in Family Tree Maker and Family Tree Builder. When I click the Ancestry button in Roots Magic, I'm presented with a list of all individuals. I can click this checkbox to see only the individuals which have changed. To explain the Roots Magic process, let me highlight James Overman. 
I've added seven facts to James and modified the date on one of his facts. You'll see those all here. You may notice Roots Magic displays the baptism fact out of life sequence, but that's another programming issue. There is no button here to accept all changes. Even if I click on the options, there is nothing to help speed this process. What I need to do is click the arrow on the side of each event and then select Add as New Event on Ancestry. With the modified Birth event, I need to either select Add or Update Existing Event on Ancestry. That's 8 actions and 16 clicks to update this one individual, as opposed to a very few clicks to update all changed individuals in Family Tree Maker and Family Tree Builder. You can look up your own dictionary definition of synchronize, but I expect you can see there is really nothing automatic about the Roots Magic process. In fact, it's painfully manual. I'm not going to accept these changes, as they're only input for demonstration purposes and I don't want them to go to my tree. Secondly, if you decide to purchase Roots Magic and you're disappointed once you unlock the disabled features, then don't worry, as Roots Magic offer a 30 day money back guarantee. You need to download a certificate of destruction and mail or email it back to the company to declare you've removed the software and no longer use it. If you just want to download your ancestry tree and images for backup, or you're a happy Roots Magic user, then you're done and you can stop watching this video now. To be fair to Roots Magic, it is actually quite good at the uploading and downloading of complete data to Ancestry. It just fails on the day to day process involved to keep things aligned. That's where Family Tree Maker 2019 wins. The other thing I must mention is that Roots Magic provides that feature in the free version of its software. Family Tree Maker 2019 do not even offer a trial version, but they do offer a refund policy with conditions. Family Historian offers a completely unlocked trial version, so if you want to try the program with your Roots Magic data, then download and install the trial. If you're a Family Historian user or thinking about migrating to Family Historian, then just continue watching. One word of warning, choose your trial period carefully and when you'll have some time to devote to exploring the program. My trial went very quickly and I only scratched the surface of what could be done. I was using Roots Magic 7 at the time, which was a great little program, but once I tested and realised the negatives of the new build in Roots Magic version 8 and 9, there was little choice but for me to move on. Here we are in Family Historian, and this is the tree I downloaded from Ancestry. You can see my custom icons showing up in this diagram, and you can also see a lot of coloured lines. These coloured lines is Family Historian's way of informing me there are family linkage problems with this tree. Remember this came down from Ancestry, where there was no indication of a problem. How I got to this tree was by looking at this data view called the Records window in Family Historian. You can set this up to your own preference and include lots of data, which was not possible for me in Roots Magic. I reverse sorted on children and look at Samuel here with 26 children. I simply ran this Ancestors and Descendants diagram and the problems were evident. If I look for Samuel on the family view, I see him here with spouse Elizabeth Bernard and 13 children, but I also see him here with spouse Jemima Palmer and 13 children. Notice the names of the first 10 of those children I have listed are exactly the same, and I could easily add more than 10 children to this view if I wished. I'll go off and correct that problem, but let me do another diagram for the second person on children count, and notice there are no coloured lines, so no family linkage problems. You can see there are several infant deaths just here, and I see there's a few media linkage problems I need to address. So do beware of online tree compilations and do use good powerful desktop software to correct your family research. But for now, back to the Roots Magic Direct Import process. Click File and select Project Window, then New Project. Select Import from Other Family Tree File and browse for the Roots Magic file we just created by downloading our Ancestry data. Select the file and click Open. I believe this works exactly the same for legacy family tree users. If you have your media files in your own folder structure and you want to stay that way, uncheck this box. 
Leaving this box checked will copy all your media to your Family Historian project folder. That means you'll have two copies of every linked media file on your computer. Click Next. You have some options here and you can leave them all as default. Personally, I prefer to have alternate names as names only. Give the new project a name and click Finish. Family Historian will work through 17 or more input processes, which may take some time depending on the size of your file. I'm alerted 401 media links are broken and I opt to have Family Historian relink those. And these two crossed out photos of Susan will fill out on completion. This takes a while and in my case I have 7 physical and large drives and Family Historian is going to search them all, so I will cut to the end. Search completed, 394 of 401 links repaired, and the two photos of Susan are back in place. Close that, and for detailed information about importing from Roots Magic, click on this link. This will inform you exactly what Family Historian does with your imported data, including name groups, research logs, and to-do items. As I said before, I'm very happy with this import process. Close that. Let me click on Media. And here is all of our media files and thumbnails on one screen. These ancestry style numeric file names are those which I will be addressing in the next video. I can see here two which are exactly the same except for this suffix. One has five links, the other has two links. And this one has the lower record ID. I go to Edit, Merge Compare Records. I'm going to select the second one now and move it across. Click OK, I get this screen. This is the long file name and this is the one I want to drop. I highlight the file name and select Discard. Family Historian strikes through it. I click Merge and the records are now merged and I have a single entry with seven links. That defines the process from Ancestry to Family Historian via Roots Magic, which includes all of your Ancestry source images. Family Historian gives me all the research powers I need, and that was the main reason I was forced to abandon Roots Magic after 20 plus years. Is Family Historian perfect? Well, no program is perfect in my opinion, but Family Historian comes pretty close, and as close as any I've tried. The other encouraging thing for me was that Family Historian continues to develop at a steady pace, and I've found their support staff very attentive and responsive, something I was no longer finding with Roots Magic. So the next video will be renaming those cryptic ancestry style file names. It'll be adding descriptions to them in Family Historian, and it'll be adding keywords to help us filter and find those files in the future. Thanks for watching.